52 year old female, I'm sorry, 52 year old mm -hmm. female here for pain in the right shoulder and the right wrist. The right wrist is more tender. It looks like she has the core veins, uh, tenosynovitis. She has some, some puffiness of the wrist as well. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do an ultrasound guided uh, cortisol injection in the um, first extensor compartment. So if we're at 1014, we're looking at the first extensor compartment. There's a little bit of uh, tenosynovitis there. Actually, as you go distally, there's a little bit more. You see some swelling around the two tendons. Uh, radials to the right side of the screen. We're at 1015, we're a little bit up her forearm. And she does have a little bit of fluid around the uh, fourth compartment. Uh, she has like an extension digitorum tenosynovitis as well. 1015 again. Here we can see some of that surrounding fluid around the fourth extensor compartment. Uh, just a thin sliver of fluid, not too much. 1016, um, just looking up her arm again, radials to the right. And here we're going proximally. You can see the muscle of the extensor indices at this point. Also appreciate the muscle of the extensor pollicis longus as well. Now we're going to go, we're going to shift radial over to 1016 again. We're pretty high up the forearm. We're going down distally. And you can see the... Uh, the muscles of the extensor indices and extensor pollicis longus are obviously more pronounced at this point, and now we're going distally, and they're starting to basically feather into the tendons. Dolor aquí o no? Sí, hay poquito. Poquito, no mucho. No mucho. Sometimes people get like an intersection to so here you can see the first extensor compartment kind of rolling over the second extensor compartment. And this is where you can get an intersection syndrome in the distal forearm. There's another intersection syndrome distally over the wrist where the third compartment rolls over the second compartment. So here we're basically looking at that first compartment roll over the second compartment. Uh, and if there's friction or inflammation between those two, then you'll get this intersection syndrome. Here we're back to that first extensor compartment distally. I see. Uh, yeah, so she's most, again, mm -hmm. pre pretty tender on that first compartment. So now we're turning on that first compartment. And here we're now looking at the first extensor compartment in long access view to the tendons, which is really kind of like a sagittal view. Hard to really delineate where which tendon ends and begins, but it looks like you can see that delineation of the extensor pollicis brevis right above the abductor pollicis longus. And here's the injection where you can see the needle essentially right above the uh, tendons. And this is a nice approach as you're basically in plane, you can see the needle, you can see where the tip is right above the tendons, and then you can see the injectate circumferentially surrounding the tendons as you inject. 